Okay, if you would please stand up with us. We're going to do the call to worship together. We've got uh, a lot more people here than usual, which is great. And that means we should be able to read this nice and loud. So uh, 1 Peter 6. Is it just 6 through 9? 6 to 9. Here we go. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that all proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Let's pray together. God, thank you for beautiful weather, cool breeze, and a chance for all of us to just gather together uh, and sing and worship and enjoy fellowship and hear your word preached and taught today. God, what a joyous occasion. Thank you for each one here. God, may you just bless the rest of our day. May you be with our singing. May you be with uh, your word being preached. And uh, we're just so thankful for this opportunity to be together um, this morning as the church, regardless of the location. Uh, Lord, again, may you just bless every ounce of what we do today. Thank you for the baptisms later, and thank you for um, just each one here. We're so grateful. God, may you be blessed because of our worship here today. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, we are excited to be out here. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite parts of the year, that's for sure. The other night we had a movie night here with the youth, and when you'd go outside, you could hear uh, the Frozen soundtrack. It was kind of weird. And I realized they were doing an outdoor movie at Homewood, and we could hear it the whole way over here. So my goal for today is that everybody in town, from BCO the whole way into town, can hear us singing. So let's sing it out and let's worship God together. Oh, 
greet each other. Good morning again. A couple announcements. Can you guys hear me back on the ramp? Y'all good out there? Josh, Russell, can you hear me? He's the one I saw furthest back. I don't think he heard me. Okay. That doesn't mean he can't hear me. It just means he wasn't paying attention. Good morning. Glad you're here. This is, uh, this is a great day to just be together. A couple announcements. I just want to let you know that tomorrow there's going to be three different prayer walks that happen in our community because Tuesday is the first day of school. We keep reminding the kids of that because they're so excited. Uh, and uh, this is the one time of year that the, the kids' facial expressions turn into frowns and the parents turns into smiles. Uh, but tomorrow, there's, there's going to be a prayer walk at 1 o'clock. Tomorrow afternoon, there's going to be a prayer walk at Martinsburg Elementary School. And then they're going to go from that to Spring Cove Middle School at 145. And then they're going to go to the high school at 230. If you can make all three of those, that would be great. If you can just do one, just so you know the times. Uh, but it's just going to be an opportunity for us to gather around the schools and pray for uh, school starting, and uh, one thing that we've been covering with the kids a lot is that they are followers of Jesus and not just fans of Jesus. So that's going to be something we specifically ask uh, for prayer for our kids. Next week, we're going to be back here for service at 11 o'clock, okay? We won't have coffee and donuts probably at 10, but uh, we're going to have service here at 11, and there will not be a meal following the service. So, I mean, if you wanted to hang out and, like, go to Subway and eat out here, you probably could. I don't think Ann would care if you ate on her lawn. But uh, we're not providing a meal next week. Service is here at 11, no Sunday school. And then the following week, everything commences as normal. Um, uh, a couple weeks ago, you heard us announce that we had a box out in the lobby area that you could donate items to give to homeless shelters in Washington, D.C., and Joyce Bosler was heading that up as she was going to go down to, with a group of ladies down to Ladies Encounter, uh, or, or Women of Faith, I'm sorry, and um, did I get it right? Ladies Encounter went to Women of Faith. Yeah, thank you, okay, all right, so I had it right somewhat. Anyway, so we wanted to give you an update. I think there's going to be some slides shown up on the screen some of the cool things that happened because of what you donated. I think there's just five pictures, but there's a lot of items there. And uh, there were 158 ladies from over 70 churches that went down there with Joyce, which is pretty exciting. And whenever they met with the, uh, the couple that works with About My Father's Business down in D.C., they filled their van. Joyce said there probably wasn't room for one more thing in there whenever they were done. And it was super encouraging, and you got to play a part in that. And so I just wanted to, we wanted to make you aware of that ministry opportunity that you uh, gave to. And, uh, and then as they get to distribute some of those items out, they're going to send some more pictures later on as they, as they get to give those items out to people. Um, I think that's it by way of announcements for now, but uh, I would like to ask George Swain to come up if he could and, uh, and share a couple things with you and introduce himself. Thanks, uh, Pastor Adam. Zdravim vas, fumeno Jezusa Krista. In the Czech language, that means I, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, my name's George Swain, and my wife Cindy is here, and we have represented you and Jesus 
uh, for the last 21 years in Prague, in the Czech Republic, to the Czech people. And uh, we have come today just to say thank you. Thank you for praying for us for those 21 years. Thanks for financially supporting us. Uh, during those 21 years, we've offered the Jesus Film to this, the city twice. Prague is a city of 1.3 million people, 550,000 households. So everyone has had an opportunity to receive the Jesus Film twice. We've had 31 ministry teams that come, have come and worked with us. Uh, we've started a church in Prague, and uh, we have started a, a Grace Mother Church in Prague. We've started a point, point of light in a village outside of Prague, and those are continuing to meet and grow and exist. And uh, what has happened is our home church has for several years now invited us to come home and work with them in urban church planning with, with urban poor. And at the beginning we said, no way. You know, we're very, very happy here in Prague. But we prayed about it. We talked about, uh, talked with it over, talked over this with some of our people that have played important roles in our lives. And finally, God spoke to us through our hearts and told us that this is where God wants us to be for the next, uh, next few years of our lives. Um, probably a key verse for us during this time is Philippians 4.4, 4, which says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. When we left Prague, people blessed us and thanked us, and uh, we were sharing Christ with people right to the last day uh, before we left. And um, as we come to our, our home church in Ashland, people have been blessing th us there too. So it's really been a neat thing to go through this process. It's been a neat thing to see our church be born. And we, it's been a neat thing to see many, many people have opportunity to receive Jesus as their Savior and turn to him. So we just wanted to stop today and say thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for praying. It makes a difference in the world. Uh, what you do here in Martinsburg, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Thank you, George. You can stay for a second. We got uh, two more things I want to announce quick, but before we get into that, let me just pray for George and Cindy on this new phase of their lives. Uh, God, thank you for George and Cindy and their family and their faithfulness to the people of Prague for the past 21 years. God, we'll never know this side of eternity, the impact, the full impact that they were able to have but uh, we look forward to heaven for so many reasons. But one of those reasons uh, that we're thankful for right now is to see how many people were impacted because of you allowing this family to spend 21 years in Prague. Uh, Lord, I, I pray your blessings on the next phase of their ministry life. And uh, as, they, as they settle back into their home church here in the States in Ashland, that they would, uh, they would hit the ground running with this new ministry opportunity and you would bless it mightily. Thank you for the opportunity we've had to play a small part in uh, what you wanted to accomplish in Prague. And may you uh, continue to bless this family. Thank you that they could be with us today. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, two things I just want to make you aware of before we collect the offering, and then we're just going to say another word of prayer for our family, uh, for our church family members. Uh, some of you, most of you probably know that uh, Ruth Stern passed away and went home to be with the Lord on Thursday morning. And so we want to make sure that we are lifting Wayne his, and, his, uh, and the family up in our prayers this morning as they uh, are mourning a great loss to their family, but uh, re also uh, a bittersweet rejoicing as we know where Ruth is spending her eternity, and she is experiencing a life that we can only imagine here on earth. Uh, I wanted to make you aware that family and friends will be received uh, this afternoon evening at, at back at the church in the worship center at, from 5.30 to 9, so you're welcome and encouraged to go and, and uh and pay your respects and just encourage the family this evening from 5.30 to 9 at our church. And, uh, and also tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. there will be a, a funeral service at, back at the church. So uh, if you think of it, uh, pray for the family, send a card, uh, show up and encourage them however you can. And uh, the other thing I want to make you aware of is that Stacy Zimmerman's father suddenly passed away yesterday of a heart attack. And, uh, and so the, uh, the family is um, sort of in shock and awe as, uh, as, they, as they walk through this. 
road. Uh, the arrangements haven't even been finalized yet. This is very fresh and extremely unexpected. And so I ask that you would pray for Tim and Stacy and their kids as, uh, and the rest of the family as they walk through this loss. Um, so it's moments like this where we just become increasingly thankful for eternity and the, the promise that Jesus assured us uh, whenever he died on the cross. Uh, so I just uh, I want to uh, make you aware of those things so that you know how to pray. And, uh, and then if you would, uh, while we're taking the offering, there's going to be some uh, Richie's buckets passed through the crowd, and that's the offering this morning. And uh, if you could, uh, that's how we're going to collect our offering. But we're going to say a word of prayer and pray for those two families in particular this morning uh, while we're collecting our offering. God, thank you so much for the promise of eternity. Thank you for the hope and assurance that salvation gives us. Thank you for the gospel and the, the, um, the amazing power that it has. Lord, I want to thank you for Ruth's testimony. I want to thank you for the life that she lived up until the very end, a joyful life um, and a full life. But she leaves behind a family and friends that are hurting, and we ask that you would provide your comfort because it's the only comfort that's really going to last. Um, God, may you be with them as they walk through this the next couple days and weeks and months as they adjust to life without Ruth. I thank you that she's not suffering anymore. I thank you that there is no such thing as cancer in your presence. Uh, and uh, I thank you that she finally is, is full and complete in your presence. May we take heart and encouragement in that. I pray for Stacy's family as they walk through the loss of uh, her dad, and uh, may they feel your comfort and your arms around them. God, we love you, and uh, clinging on to you sometimes is the only hope that we have and the only thing that feels okay, and so I pray that uh, you would provide your presence and your peace and your comfort through these next few days and weeks and months for both families as they readjust life uh, without a dear loved one in their presence. God, thank you again for the opportunity that we have to be together and the small glimpse of heaven that this is here today where many are gathered for the same purpose and the same reason, and that's to worship a great and amazing creator God. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you for that glimpse of, of eternity that we get today. May you be honored and glorified through our worship, whether that's through our giving, whether that's through singing, whether that's through how we respond to your word being preached. But God, we just bless you for how you have provided for us. And may you continue to provide in uh, your name. Amen. Brian Lay, and he has expressed interest in uh, becoming baptized here at Martinsburg Grace Brethren Church. Hi, my name is Yvette Longenecker. I'm Brittany Albright, and I'm going into ninth grade. I'm Lene Mosby, and I'm going into sixth grade. Right here at eighth, third grade. Hi, I'm Levi Weiderman. I'm in grade five. Hi, my name is Eli Neville, and I'm in second grade. Hi, my name is Catherine Longenecker and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Maya Jeffries and I'm going into fourth grade. Oh boy. Um, cheetah, I guess. And why? They're the fastest land animal. <laughs> It'd be cool to be known for something. I would want to be a swan because they end their lives more beautiful than how they began them. I guess a tiger because they're sleek and they're quiet. Probably a zebra because I like the color of them. An elephant because they're fat. Turtle because it's my favorite animal. Single tooth tiger because it can eat anything. A cat because I could wander around. I would be a tiger shark because that's my swim team name. I once was running from your love and mercy.
mercy then I found the place I belong um after growing up in the church and knowing all the things of the Bible and I had a good foundation and then I um, sort of went astray during my college years and then towards the end of college I really realized I was in the wrong spot in life and um, went up and just asked God to take control of my life and forgive me for what I've done. I accepted Christ as my personal savior my freshman year of college when I was 18. So I made a commitment to Jesus when I was at a younger age, but I renewed my faith when this past school year I had friend issues. But really, I don't really have a testimony, but I actually have God's testimony because 1 John chapter 5, I um, randomly looked up verses and it says, we accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his son. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar, because they have not believed the testimony of God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. Eternally touched me, and it made me realize that my testimony is least to what God's testimony is. I was saved March 21st, 2010, here down by the nursery. I asked Jesus into my heart when I was seven years old. I asked Jesus into my heart when in my room with my parents when I was five. I accepted Jesus when I was four and I played with my mom. When I was eight years old, I accepted Jesus into my life. I was four and I was in my room and I prayed with my mom. I feel that it's you know, my obligation to God that I proclaim that word that you know, I'm a follower of God. So. I want to be baptized so I can publicly display to my family, my friends, and my church family the decision I made years ago to accept Christ as my personal Savior and to show God my gratitude for allowing me to have eternal life because of that decision. I want to get baptized because I want to show the whole church that I do love God and he means something to me. To show other Christians and be a good role model, role model to other people and show them like the light of Christ. So I can follow their God. I want to get baptized because I want to show everybody that I follow Jesus and he's into my heart. When I get baptized, I think it'll help me be a better Christian. So I can show people I already asked Jesus into my life. I want to be baptized to show people that I'm a Christian. So we are obviously excited about that, um, to have that many people being baptized today. So after we're done with lunch, when you see a mass of people down by the pool, we're not swimming, we're, we're doing baptism. So feel free to join us. Um, and Wyatt, are you here? Because you, you're definitely my favorite animal, an elephant, because they're fat. That was, I love it. <laughs> um, all right, let's stand together and, and, uh, and worship. To so build your kingdom here. Let the darkness show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. When this nation can change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here. We pray. 
Spirit be with us here this day. Draw us close. Keep our eyes above the waves. Help us keep our eyes focused on you. Not the world, not conformity to the world, not the challenges of the world. But our eyes must be focused on you. Take us deeper, Father. Deeper than we've ever realized with respect to your spirit and who you are. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. I'm going to give my best shot at this announcement here, and I need to stay in one spot so I don't get any feedback. Sorry, I won't walk. I'll stay right here. Promise. Okay, you guys make sure I don't walk anywhere, okay? If I start to walk, tell me to stop. All right. It's a fundraiser benefit for Tim Edmondson, Saturday, August 30th, from 8 to 10 at Del Grosso's. Am I correct so far? Anybody? No, I guess I'm, I guess I'm all right then. Okay. $10 for a big bucket dump and 15 for a t-shirt. Now, Adam, is that's the big bucket dump, the, like in the water park. Okay. So if you pay 15, you get the dump and the t-shirt. 10 is just, no? $10? Okay, 15 for the t-shirt. Okay. Uh, and there is an account open at First National Bank to benefit Tim Edmondson Jr. Did that kind of capture everything sort of kind of? 10 a.m. before the park opens. 8 to 10. All right, 8 to 10 a.m. before the park opens on Saturday, August 30th. Did that kind of capture everything? Good. All right, very good. Hey, it's great to see everybody today all packed in here. Some people back out there in the... Hi, Gary. Way back there. Bleacher seats all the way in the back there. It's great to see everybody. Uh, we're looking forward to a great day, exciting time, baptisms, games, all sorts of food and, and fun things. As you know, we started a series here recently, last couple weeks, in Romans chapter 12. And uh, Adam touched on Romans chapter 1 and some uh, elements of that. And today, uh, like, excuse me, last week we touched on Romans chapter 12, verses 2, 1 and 2, and talked about some things there. So this week we're going to progress into chapter, or verse 3, excuse me, and I think we put some slides up there for you. Uh, if you want to go ahead and put that verse up there, because I know that some of you uh, may or may not have brought your Bibles due to the circumstances here. So this is Romans 12, 1 and 2. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is God's will, what is good, accepted, and perfect. We looked at these verses last week. And the idea here is not to conform to the pattern or the schemes of this world. Satan has set various patterns and schemes within the world, and the world tries to force us to conform to the world around it. But Paul tells us not to conform, but to be transformed. This transformation is a process of the mind. It's a new way of thinking. We have to relearn things. We have to do things differently. It's a new set of values. We need to retrain our minds. And if you remember, I quoted R.C. Sproul, and he said, we have to think God's thoughts after him. Think God's thoughts after him. Goes through the process of retraining our minds. So as we continue through Romans 12 and progress into verse 3, it's not shocking that Paul continues this line of thinking. He's still focusing on the thoughts of the mind, the thought processes of our mind. He knows that pride and arrogance is dangerous. The pride and arrogance will hinder us from being able to speak the love of Jesus Christ to others. That pride and arrogance will be a major hindrance within the church. And Paul's going to go into that in the subsequent verses following verse 3. So he wants us to make sure that we're thinking clearly. This new thought process got to be different. So if we really want a good place to start, to not conform to the world, but for our minds to be transformed, what we need to do is to look at ourselves differently. We have to see ourselves differently with respect to others, with respect to God. We need to begin to look into our minds and see ourselves differently. That's a great place to start. So if you'll put the next verse up there, very good, thank you guys. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. This is transformation. This is a renewing of the mind. 
we need to think of ourselves differently. Paul knows the problems that will be confronted with respect to pride. So if we're going to have a renewed mind and a different thought process, a new set of values, how we think about ourselves is vital. How we perceive ourselves mentally is vital. The passage says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Notice that the passage says, don't think of yourself highly. That's not what it says. You and I are created in the image of God. We have purpose. We have value. So the passage doesn't say, don't think of yourself as valuable. It just says, don't think of yourself with an inflated opinion. Don't think of yourself with pride, with boastfulness. You see, when we think of ourselves like that, it leads to problems. Paul is going to address those in the subsequent verses. Want problems in the church? Let someone work in an area that they are not gifted. What's even worse? Encourage them and tell them, hey, you've got a real gift there, even though in your heart you know that they don't. That person begins to inflate themselves and have a sense of pride. The next thing you know, you've got a person working in an area that is not their passion, and there's a problem. It's kind of like American Idol. Would someone please tell those people that you can't sing before they go on there? Now, I know that adds to ratings, and you get somebody up there, and they can't carry a tune, and that adds to ratings, and everybody watches because now they realize that they're better than the person that just went on national TV to try to sing. See how it works? Pride, arrogance. Paul was aware of that. He knew that. That's why he penned this. You see, when people see their giftedness as of greater value than others within the body, now we have an issue. While we have different giftedness, they all have the same value because all of those gifts are empowered by God the Father. If you would, put up the slide for Philippians 2, verses 3 through 4. Paul had another thought that he wrote to the Philippians church. Here's what he said in Philippians do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but to also to the interests of others. Notice there's a little bit of a twist here. It says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit. In Romans, Paul said, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Now he says, do nothing. It went from a mental perspective of thinking to action. He says, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. And then in Philippians, he says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. A transformed mind begins to think spiritual thoughts. Spiritual thoughts alone won't demonstrate to the world Jesus Christ. Spiritual mindset and a transformed mind is not going to set us apart. It's not going to make us different from the world. What's going to make us different is when we do nothing out of selfish ambition and consider others more important than ourselves. That transformed mind then flows into how we interact with others. Let me see if I can illustrate this. Parents, if you've got kids going to school this week and they're not paying attention, now's the time to give them a little elbow and tell them to look up here. Go ahead. Go ahead, you can tell them. Look, 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 tell them, look up there, listen to what Pastor Brian's going to say, all right, because here's what we're going to do. I know that you're all kids excited about going back to school. Pastor Adam has belabored it, right, guys? You're all thrilled about it, okay? You're excited about going back to school. Here's the thing. For the last three months, you've been able to do pretty much anything that you've wanted to do, right, kids? All right, I got a couple no's up here. <laughs> I'll talk to your parents afterwards, all right? Just let me know who they are. In the summertime, you can go out and play whenever you want to, for the most part. Now, I realize there's some guidelines here, but you can go out and play whenever you want to. You can talk to your friends on the phone, email, text, internet, whatever the case may be, or whenever you want to. Most occasions, you can get up in the morning, you can sleep in if you want to, watch TV when you want to, you've got the basic idea, right? For three months, you've kind of been able to pretty much do whatever you want to, then all of a sudden, bang, Tuesday morning rolls around, and you're back in school. You notice I've used the word you a lot. You could do whatever you want, you could go wherever you want, you could talk to whoever you want, now all of a sudden you go back to school. You know, and free recess time is controlled by the teacher. Teacher says when you can go out for recess. Those uh, people that you wanted to speak to, your classmates sitting beside you, 
Sometimes you can't talk with them as freely because there's times we need to focus on what the lesson is, what the teacher's saying. So that time that you could internet and talk back and forth in the summer, you can't do that now. You have to be quiet. You're restricted by a time schedule. The bus is going to be here at 7.05. You need to be out at the bus. You can't sleep in. You've got to be ready to get in the lunch line at the proper time. I think you understand where I'm coming from. You see, the key to your school success is not how you see yourselves, but how you see others. Because when you get into school, you have to esteem others better than yourself. You have to follow the instructions of the teacher, those that are in charge. You have to give regard to your classmates your classmates, bus drivers, and teachers, they become the ones that have authority over you. Those are the ones that you have to submit to. The Philippians passage goes on to give us an important thought, though. Take a look at it. Notice that the verse goes on to say, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but to the interest of others. The summertime was geared around you. Now all of a sudden, you're back in school and you have to look out to the interest of others. That person that cuts ahead of you, kids getting in the lunch line, you're just going to go ahead and accept it. It's okay. That other classmate that's getting a little bit more attention to you, it's going to be all right. You're going to accept that. When that fellow student beside you is struggling with that algebra problem, you're going to help them because you esteem others better than yourselves. God says, count others and their deeds as more important than yours. Run back to that Romans slide, if you would, guys. In the middle of the Romans passage that we looked at today, it says, see that phrase, sober judgment? A word study of that phrase indicates self-control. You could replace sober judgment with self-control, and the same meaning applies because... Kids, when you go back to school, you have to have self-control. Now, there's also a lesson in their parents, if you didn't miss it, when we go to work tomorrow, we have to exemplify self-control. We're going to interact with the world, and we need to look differently. We must be careful to think soberly. We can't be egoholics. We need to be sober, not egoholics. The world wants us to think of self over others. That would be conforming to the world. So when you go back to school this week and work, think of yourself with self-control. You are not the most important person. God calls us to see and esteem others more important than ourselves. Our needs, our desires are to come second. That's transformation. That's living out transformation. That's exemplifying ourselves separate from the world. At the end of the verse, in order to maintain sober judgment, gives us a little key. It says, think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Judge ourselves soberly with self-control, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. The abilities, skills, and gifts, and talents that we so often look at that inflate our pride and our arrogance were given to us by God the Father. He empowers us and enables us with those gifts. He has given those to us. He has given each of us a measure of faith in order to serve the body. None of those gifts more valuable or more important because they are all empowered by God. Trust me, you don't want me up here singing and leading worship. You don't want that, okay? That's not where I fit. But this preaching is no more important than the nursery care that takes place day to day and every Sunday back at our church, or the Sunday school teacher, or the performance of a person playing percussion up here. All of those have equal value. God empowers them. God gifts them. So when we see things on that plane, there's no place for pride. There's no place for arrogance. When all gifts are seen as given by God for His use, from His power, then no gift, no talent, no ability can be seen as better or more important or more valuable than another. That's why Paul tells us to think soberly about ourselves, to be self-controlled in our thought process. Next week, we'll be back here again. We're going to look at verse 5 and how gifts play out within the church, within the body. We have the right mindset. We have a transformed mind. We do nothing out of self-ambition, 
vain conceit, esteem others better than ourselves. And then what we want to look at is now how does all that play out in the church? This, the body, Christ's church. Would you pray with me, please? Father God, thank you for the body. Thank you for the church. You choose to work through us within this church, Father. I'd ask that you would um, empower us, help us to be mindful of those around us, to esteem others better than ourselves. Uh, Lord, we know that there are uh, families this week that are hurting. We think of the Zimmermans and the Stearns. We just ask that you would call upon them and strengthen them, empower them. May they feel your peace and your comfort. Lord, we thank you for this fellowship. We thank you for the opportunity today to gather together as a body, to talk, to encourage one another, to fellowship with one another, to spur each other on. May there be genuine caring and love take place here this afternoon. Lord, we ask your blessing upon the food that we're about to partake. We thank you for it. You've provided it for us. We honor you, we love you, and we thank you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen.